All right, Sketch Pad Podcast, we back. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to the page. So look, we're going to be talking about this black woman talking at the Trump rally, and she dropping some science and some knowledge and some facts. Um, so yeah, we're going to get into that, and then uh, we'll be back. All right, man, look, if you like this, the content, please uh, subscribe. If you want us to react to your stuff, you know, links will be on the screen. If you want to donate, that'll be on the screen too. All right, man. Thank you for all your donations, super chats, all that good stuff. But uh, look, so what we're going to do. We're going to watch this video, and then we're going to come back and discuss what she said. All right, so let's go. I'm so happy you all came out to see me. So... <laughs> My name is Michaela Montgomery. A lot of you guys know me as the girl from Chick-fil-A, but I am so much more than that. (laughs) Not only do I serve as the CEO of Conserve the Culture, I am also the state director for Blexit down here in Georgia. I'm a Fulton County coordinator for America First Works, and I'm also launching a podcast on the Patriots Prayer Network, so put some respect on my name. All right, so I wanted to stop it real quick. Um, so provide some backstory. So this chick, she had organized Trump to come to Chick Fil A in Atlanta, and none of her coworkers knew this. He just showed up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And she organized, it and she was saying how she knows she she really liked President Trump and all this good stuff. So he gave her a chance to speak at his rally in uh uh in uh, uh Atlanta. So it's a big deal because this this right here they were talking she was talking um before you know after Kamala Harris just had a rally in the same place I believe and she had Meg the Stallion twerking. Trump brings a black woman here and this is what she talks about. So let's listen. I'm so happy you all came out to see me. So, (laughs) my name is Michaela Montgomery. A lot of you guys know me as the girl from Chick-fil-A, but I am so much more than that. (laughs) Not only do I serve as the CEO of Conserve the Culture, I am also the state director for Blexit, down here in Georgia. I'm a Fulton County coordinator for America First Works, and I'm also launching a podcast on the Patriots Prayer Network, so put some respect on my name. Now, why don't we jump right into it? See, as a young single mother, I can tell y'all that rent is too damn high. I... I can tell you that as a young black voter, groceries are too damn high. And as an American citizen, period, seniors like my parents should never have to choose between medicine or food. It should never be the quality of life versus the quantity of life. And I don't want to hear, oh, but we capped the price of insulin and lowered the price of all these medicines. Yeah, but you raised the price of everything else, so it's about time to start telling the truth to Americans and let them know exactly what they're signing up for if they want to vote for Kamala Harris. We need to vote based on facts and not feelings. See, under Harris and Biden, the average Georgia household is losing $1,060 per month, and inflation is at 21.4%. And due to the war on energy, average gas prices have reached record highs for the state. We also did a poll, and 80% of us black Americans are not happy with the current state of the economy, so I'm going to need 80% of y'all to vote accordingly in November. They love me. They love me. They really love me. The left wants you to get in your feelings about things that have been said, but I want you guys to pay attention to what has been done. 
They don't want to talk policy. They just want to use propaganda to steal your vote. The left is trying to tout this woman as a savior for the black community, but all she's done is hurt the black community since she came into the game. See, the first step in destroying the black community is to dismantle the black family. So aside from her record as a prosecutor, why don't we ask Mrs. Willie Brown if Kamala Harris cares about black families? All right, so look, for y'all that don't know, she's talking about uh, Willie Brown who met Kamala Harris and he was the one that put her on, basically. I believe he was uh, in the, he was in the politics. I don't know if he was a sinner or something. And he, he introduced her to it. But he was messing with her when he was married, I believe. And he had a, <laughs> this when she was younger. He was 30 years old. He's 90 years old now. So she's 60. You know what I'm saying? And this one, he was he was younger when she was younger. And they basically people were saying that she was a straight up whore. Like she was sleeping with everybody. You know what I'm saying? And he he uh he basically uh exposed that. He wrote a book or something like that and exposed it. He brought her a BMW and anything. So that's what she's really known for if you look it up. Let's keep it going. Mm. Wow. I wonder if Mrs. Willie Brown, a black woman, is also with her. A few days ago, President Trump said he didn't know Vice President Harris was a black woman. I'm trying to figure out what all the outrage is about because she's only black when it's time to get elected. Yeah. Did I lie? The same black people who are mad at Trump for being confused about her race, ethnicity, nationality, whatever, are seemingly forgetting that while you're touting her as a savior for black people, she identifies as an Asian woman. She chose her side and it wasn't ours. When asked if she would ever do anything specifically for black people, she said no. Whereas Trump gave us the platinum plan, which specifically uplifted the black community by increasing capital by almost $500 billion, creating 500,000 new black businesses, and would give black churches the ability to fight for federal resources for their communities. Strong borders aren't a thing literally everywhere else in the world. Since when has being patriotic been a crime? See, a few weeks ago yeah, after the debate, right Trump mentioned black jobs. And a lot of people got in an uproar as if they didn't know what he meant. Well, we go to the polls and cast our black vote. We go to the stores and spend our black dollar. We live in our black community, but for whatever reason, we draw the line at a black job. Yeah, she cooking. <laughs> She going off right now. She going, she going off. Oh, man. She's speaking facts. Oh, but wait, because if you're wondering what a black job is, please, I encourage you all to drive through Atlanta and all these beautiful black-owned businesses and check and see who works there. Probably a black person working for a black entrepreneur, recycling the black dollar, creating black generational wealth. If they come here illegally and they're taking your jobs and your resources, then please believe my cousins in the Appalachians, they coming for you too. And y'all know Kamala Harris has yet to say Lake and Riley's name. As borders are, she opened the border to millions of illegal immigrants that have flooded American streets with deadly drugs and gangs that have spiked overdoses by over 124% and brought more crime into commu uh, excuse me, minority communities. So how's that for black folks? But let's take race out of it. Just as a woman, period. How can you be a champion for women's rights when you're taking away opportunities from biological women and giving them to transgendered ones? <laughs> oh, okay. because I wasn't done. See, how can you promote equity for women and you're allowing men to play in women's sports? Mm. And what kind of feminist
business would still allow men to enter their sacred spaces, i.e. our bathrooms and school locker rooms. Do I even need to mention the opening ceremony at the Olympics? Angela Carini was forced to fight a man and told us that she's never been punched so hard in her life. We cannot allow dangerous liberals who think things like this are okay into the White House because my daughter will not be fighting a man at her wrestling match. Yeah, I'm going to tell you right now, she definitely going to be a politician. She's this, her right here, her presence alone, the way she's speaking, she has a lot of charisma. And you can tell that she's a, she's a star, man. This chick right here, I'm going to tell you right now, five years from now, she's going to be, she's going to be a politician. She's probably be a mayor or something. She's going to mm-hmm. be something. I'm going to tell you right now. And what I think both men and women can agree on is that national security is important. So who would y'all rather see lead us into war if it were so to happen? My silk press sister Kamala or the big dog Donald Trump? (laughs) And lastly, I cannot get up here without mentioning my farmers, the backbone of this country. And aside from the Biden-Harris administration hurting you guys in ways we can't even comprehend by the rising uh, cost of everything, black farmers suffered even more due to the delays associated with the Inflation Reduction Act signed in 2022. Now, don't let the Biden-Harris administration fool you because they waited until the ninth hour to to sign off on disbursements as a last-minute attempt to garner support. But why would they hurt the agricultural industry? Probably because they're looking forward to making more money in the pharmaceutical one. And speaking of pharmaceuticals, because I promise I'm going to wrap this up, when they bring up abortion and they talk about protecting your medical freedoms, don't be afraid to mention COVID. The Biden-Harris administration forced Americans to take an experimental vaccine and took away their jobs, their livelihoods, and their freedoms if they refused. Trump gave us a choice and Biden gave us a mandate. Hey y'all, cause I'm about to kill him with this one. So the next time the left wants to tell you that, hey, abortion is a right, and you need to protect your medical freedoms. Remember that they took those freedoms away from men and women the second they got in office, and there's nothing stopping them from doing it again. (laughs) Clock it. So lastly, again, I'm going to encourage you all to vote based on the facts and not feelings. Oh, he made me feel so bad when he said that. Okay, but they hurt your families when they sent all your tax dollars overseas. Oh, it hurts my feelings when he acts like that. Okay, but it hurts all of us when you see an administration failing their country that they were elected to represent. In which case, I'm going to leave y'all with, hey, mama, daddy, I made it. Yeah, man. She was cooking, man. I think uh, I think what she said was important. A lot of people gotta understand. Like at this point, man, the honeymoon is over with Kamala. I think a lot of people they were just high off of it because she was just something new. But when they realized who they really high off of, they realized that it's Kamala, the same person y'all was saying three, two, three weeks, four weeks ago that she was trash. Now y'all all of a sudden saying she's the best thing since pants with pockets. Like, come on now. You know what I'm saying? So, I think this uh, this chick, Miss Montgomery, I think she is going to be a star. I think her coming out doing that. And let's be clear here. He did this. Like, this is, this is the reason why I like Donald Trump. And I ain't going to apologize for it. But this is the reason why. Donald Trump campaigns everywhere. He just doesn't campaign in Republican spots. He campaigned in Democratic spots, too. 
because and that tells you right there that he's going to be a president for everybody. Whether you say he wants the black vote or not, it doesn't matter. He still campaign there. So if you say he pandering, it don't matter. He still campaign there. Democrats don't pan. They do not do not do not campaign in Republican strongholds. Not at all. You never see Kamala go to a red state in, in, in uh, what's the name? In a in campaign, never you'll never see Biden do that, never. But Trump does it. Trump goes into de- Democratic places in the campaign. He was just in that was just in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta is all black mostly. In Atlanta, Georgia, but then you got him going to. Uh, he went to uh, Queens, the Bronx. He went to uh, uh, where else did he go? That was basically black. I believe he went to Chicago. So what are we doing here? Philadelphia? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like people were saying all these things, but it's like, so at, at um Kamala Harris, he had Meg Thee Stallion twerking, dancing. No black person sat there and talk. But Trump has a black female who works at Chick-fil-A and who's done something for a community comes there and she speaks and talks about things that the black community need to hear from family to whatever. This is how you know, like who, who really is in tune with what's going on. So all I'm going to say is shout out to her. And I think that that was amazing. So that's what it is. Yeah, um, that's my first time hearing of this uh, this woman. Um, never heard of her before, but um, I heard of the Chick Fil A uh, situation, so um, I'm understanding now. Man, that was dope. That was dope, man. Like she, she definitely knows how to engage a crowd. You know, she knows how to get people riled up, and she knows how to capture people's attention, you know, just by the way she was carrying herself and speaking on topics that people want to hear, she definitely knows what she's doing. And I think you're right. Like, I definitely can see her being a politician in the near future, you know, a mayor or a governor or something along those lines, because uh, she definitely was captivating as far as her approach. Um yeah, you know, I I did not see the Megan a stallion thing, and I'm glad I didn't because, you know, um, I just hate when people try to justify what's going on in the other side, you know. And I'm constantly having these discussions with people, and I'm like, well, they can't explain to me why the Democrats are allowing certain things, but yet. You can't explain to me why they're allowing certain things, but you still are going to go vote Democratic. And that's fine if that's what you're going to do. But me personally, somebody that hates politics, but I am smart enough to see what's going on between both sides. And if I'm voting, I'm voting Republican. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't have time to to uh, guess what's going on because of um because the democratic side don't want to be truthful about what what is going on in my community or what is going on around the world you know what i mean why would you bring why would you bring somebody to an event and then have them twerk so basically you just you just using using our people as a prop we just a little juke and jive and dance huh (laughs) yeah you know what i'm saying and and another thing too, how does that even make Megan the Stallion look? That makes her look real stupid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, I would think for once you would just leave your gimmick, your character in the back somewhere and and really talk to the people that support you and buy your music and really talk. You know what I'm saying? Not go and dance and perform because I'm pretty sure a lot of people weren't there for that. They were there. They were there to really hear what you were going to say, and you just sat there and just danced. And, and 
You know, it just it it just it just shows already what the other side really thinks of us. You know what I'm saying? They didn't think of you no more than just a prop. Go ahead and show time for us real quick. Go ahead and dance. Entertain the crowd. You don't gotta say nothing. Just go ahead. You know, like a like like, like an animal, like a cat in a ball of string. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and play with the yarn. You know, the kids love it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, uh, I, I like I, I like what um what old girl was talking about. Um, it was very it was very good. You know, I'm gonna pay I'm gonna try to pay more attention to what she's talking about even yeah. more now. You know, what the thing is, what I noticed, and maybe some people in the people in our um in the chat or whatever notice what I noticed is that. Republican black people are more serious about the country. You ever notice that? Like, yeah, I'm Republic, starting to see all it. the black people on the Republican side. They they talk about policies. They talk about different things. They don't really focus on race. They talk about policy policies. They talk about how to inflation. Anything you can think of. Like that's their every time I every time I talk to somebody. That is a black Republican. They're trying to make the country better. Or they want to speak on how to make the country better. Every time I talk to a black person that's a liberal, they always say Trump's a racist. Trump's this. Ain't nothing getting done. America's shit. They don't talk about what can be better. Every black Republican I talk to always talk about how they can make things better. Every black liberal or Democrat that I talk to they don't never talk about that. The only thing they talk about is Trump's a racist. They don't talk about how they can make things better for, for everybody. Right. It's crazy. But I just had to say that. I think it's important. Mm. So, but yeah, man. We out of here. See y'all. Peace. Bye.